Hello Matrix, welcome to another video and we are going to finish off this paper by doing the Euclidean geometry section. Alright, so this starts from question uh, is it question 8? <coughs> question 8 Alright, so um, of course, there is a memo for these papers, so you can have a look in the memo as well, just to double check everything for correctness. Otherwise, let's keep going. So question 8 reads, uh, complete the following statement. The line drawn from the center of the circle, perpendicular to the chord, dash, dash, dash. So basically, the story is that it bisects. the chord okay so if the line is perpendicular to a chord and that line is from the center of the circle it will bisect the chord okay now the circle below with center O has chord AB which is equal to 8 centimeters okay great and then OMT is perpendicular to AB with MT equal to 2 centimeters okay no problem and then the radius of the circle is R okay great so what can we do with this diagram we already know that this line is equal to that whole line the reason is this RADI okay so being told that this is two centimeters okay what does it make this one this one becomes R minus 2 right yes because they just make up that line all right and then being told that AB is 4 centimeters we also know that this side is going to be equal to that distance there and that means here so we will have 4 centimeters which is half of 8 why again it's because the line from the center is perpendicular to the chord it will therefore bisect the chord all right so they're telling us a story now write down with a reason the value of am okay the value of am okay so we can already tell that am is going to be four uh, of course they said write down so at some point you just try to follow as much of the instruction that is given as possible so we have 8.2 8.1 of course we know that am is going to be equal to four centimeters okay great can just say line from center perpendicular to chord bisects the chord all right so that is easy and it's clear so you get a mark for the value and for that statement and then we move on 8.2.2 let's say now calculate the length of the radius of the circle okay Great, so you can already tell that from our sketch, we can actually take things down to our triangle over there. Because that one, we have this side, we have that side, and we have that side. But of course, we have to express everything back into this. So we already explained AM because they asked us, so we don't have to explain it again. But we have to explain how we get that distance, and that's it. We do our Pythagoras. Okay, um, we will start off by saying um, OA is equal to OT. And then what is the reason here? These are radii or radi. And then we say it tells us that OT is equal to R effectively because OA is R. Can say but what 
we know that OM plus MT are equal to OT. Okay. This implies that OM plus MT is 2 is going to be equal to R. Therefore, OM is going to be R minus 2. That is sorted. We can say now in triangle OAM, okay? Doesn't really matter how you name it. We know that, well, um, OA, okay, squared is equal to OM squared plus AM squared, okay? What is that? That's Pythagoras. Right, right. And then this implies what? This is R squared equals, now we've calculated our OM above is going to be R minus 2 and then we're squaring, plus and then that's 4 and then we're squaring. So we're substituting effectively, which also implies that we have R squared equals, we expand that or we foil it out, we will have R squared minus 4R, sorry, and then uh, plus 4. Okay, and then here we have 16. Ne. Great, these ones carry the same sign on opposite sides of the equation. So when you transpose one, it cancels out the other. And then what we are left with is this situation here where we can simply take out 4R and say this also implies that 4R is going to be equal to 20. Right, therefore our R is going to be equal to 5 centimeters. And of course, you put in some centimeters at the end. So, it's one of those questions where a few things need to be clarified. Why? Well, that is how things are. So, obviously, from correct substitution <coughs> to the correct formula, the mathematical gymnastics at this point, we're not really interested in the algebra per se but probably using it as a means to an end and that is essentially where the marks are and then of course to express that it is important and whether you take it from this conclusion or from that statement it's still okay but maybe the statement is much more compelling for a mark um, so that is how that four marks is scored and then that seals the seven of question eight. All right. Um, I don't know if every time when I write, these things move around. Why? I don't know. But they just do. Okay. Let them do then. Fine, guys. This is the proof angle at center equals angle at circumference. So they want POT to be twice PA, okay, I mean angle A. So I'm not gonna go into it as well. It's it's there in your books. I think you have seen a lot of these proofs by now. Besides, these are grade 11 proofs. You've been doing these from grade 11 already. So this is easy. So your only construction is to construct say AOB, if you like, say draw diameter AOB. And then it will be such that you have POB as O1, and then you can say BOT as um, O2, right? As well as that one is divided into like that, okay? So, what is the story after you've done that? You're going to say, well, I know that OA is going to be equal to OT and equal to... Um, what is that? Uh, o, P, Y. These are already I. Okay. And if that is the case, we know that this angle is going to be equal to that angle. Right? Because that is an isosceles. Or these ones are uh, angles equal. I mean opposite equal uh, sides in a triangle. Same story can be brought forward for this one. That Look, this angle here, A2, is going to be equal to angle T same reason that these are radii they are equal so angles equal in i mean angles opposite equal sides are equal in a triangle or as we famously used to say base angles of a, an isosceles triangle but yeah 
doesn't look too famous anymore right right and then of course you're going to focus on the triangle in terms of its exterior angle from your construction exterior angle is always equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles but because this one is equal to that one you're going to you're going to express this one uh, this sum as twice angle a1 it will give you o1 and then you do the same here say also on this side you're going to focus on this exterior angle here and say well that exterior angle o2 is made up of t and a2 but since these two are equal you are going to express it as twice the angle a2 but you're going to say hold on like yeah why yeah look at this we know that o1 plus o2 is p o t okay that's fine then you substitute twice a1 for o1 and then twice a2 for o2 are you like okay there's a common factor which is a 2 you pull out the 2 you get up you end up with a1 plus a2 which is basically p a t okay and then that proves your theorem so you already know what to do so you just outline it and move on okay you don't really want to waste time but maybe this is the place to do something this is the place to do a magic number or two a few things okay so guys let's quickly do this one it says uh, a o b and c o b are diameters of the circle so where's a o b a o b there okay c o b it can't be c o b maybe they want to say c o e so let's just correct them there say c o e there must be an error that can't be a diameter it's well angulated even if they can say it's not drawn to scale it's absolute nonsense for it to be a diameter okay all right i'm sorry for the wording the yeah sometimes uh, being passionate can cause you into can cause you to say things yeah it's fine and then the center is o okay a, C, C, B, A, E, A, D, and of course are drawn. Of course, they are just telling us that these are straight lines. And then we are told D is 50 degrees. Okay, that's the blue angle there. 50 degrees. Okay, hmm, we understand it. Then what is the story with that? We know that, well, that 50 degrees should be equal to C1. Why? These are angles in the same segment, subtended by chord AE or arc AE. So that's like a bow tie, right? Right. Um, so that is fine. We can appreciate that. And um, what else can we appreciate? Well, we also appreciate the fact that this angle here is 90 degrees, right? Having been given the fact, Having been given um, the effect that this is a diameter, the diameter subtends uh, 90 degrees at circumference. Again, this is built from angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. At center, if it is a straight line, it's 180. That should be half of that, right? Which is 90 degrees. And that's how that is proven. Anyway, um, what else can we say? We know for a fact that this angle here too, um, because COE is a diameter, that was the implication instead of what they, they ended up writing. We know that this is 90 degrees too. That's also an angle in a semicircle or angle subtended by the diameter, which is also built from angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. So if these are 90 degrees, remember these now become core interior angles because they are between two straight lines. So what does that mean? It now means that this line should be parallel to that because core interior angles are supplementary, right? So that is the only condition that they will be supplementary is when they are between parallel lines. Hmm. Okay. What else can we say before we to? There's a few things we can still say more. Um, is the fact that if this is 50 degrees, for example, this is now C1. 
this is 90 what should this one be 40 degrees ne? from three angles of a triangle I mean it's it's quite obvious isn't it but we know that this angle will also be equal to that angle B which would also make it 40 degrees why these are angles in the same segment subtended by the same chord or arc AC all right okay that is fine we can accept it is there anything more yes the answer is most definitely what is this angle here this angle here is 100 degrees why do I say that look this is an angle subtended by a chord or arc AE at center and at circumference it subtends 50 or you can take this portion of it say that's 50 at circumference so angle at center is twice angle at circumference you can choose that you can choose that so that becomes a hundred okay so what is the story that angle here is going to be equal to that as well why these are vertically opposite angles and that means if that is hundred okay and it is subtended by um, okay there's no arc or chord that is identifiable there that we can use so we leave it like that at this point but the one thing that we can deduce from all of that is the fact that if this is um, say if this is 100 this angle over here should be 80 degrees right right and why these are angles on the same straight line so if this is 100 that is going to be 80 and then what does that mean it means that this angle being 80 that one should be 40 over there all right I don't know why I chose to use blue now ish, 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 ish. maybe let's make it a double angle like a double line because we don't want a problem yeah but it was supposed to be like this now I messed up because this is trying to tell us something this is 40 right right I mean you could have thought about it if this was 100 then you need 80 40 40 because what else do you know these are radii they must be equal and you have a series of isosceles triangles there which make the base angles equal because you also have the same story here that this is going to be 50 degrees so there's a lot you can say at some point when it gets to be this overwhelmingly busy you just stop and say okay I think that's enough before we run out of time there's no catch here everything is pretty straightforward so we just run with it and see how far we can go uh, so 9.2.1 says calculate giving reasons the size of the following angles O1 uh -huh. so we are sorted here so we're going to start by saying O1 is equal to twice angle D okay the reason is that angle at center is equal to two times angle at circumference so these are some of the symbols that are proved so you can use them like that no one will punish you which is going to be equal to 2 times 50 degrees which is going to be 100 degrees okay that is sorted two marks of course statement and its reason and then the answer gives you those two marks quickly B we are told here find E1 where is E1 is here okay there's plenty of ways we can do that we can use the advantage of this triangle but it will cause us to calculate and all those things yeah maniac we can do that I mean at some point it's three marks so it involves a calculation as an intermediate step and then that conclusion but here's the easiest way to go about it um, the easiest way is to say 
because I mean you don't want to start there and connect there and then 90 degrees that's like three whole steps you don't want you just want one step and then get to the answer so the way I see it it would be easier if we take this hundred and focus on this angle over here okay which is going to be 80 as well I don't know why I used different colors I was supposed to use that 80 I'm stupid today so that angle 04 is going to be 80 right angles on the same straight line when this is 100 then you know that angle at center is twice angle at circumference so we are sorted we can use that quick uh, diversion so do you see even revealing other things we probably didn't go over when we're trying to simplify our answer so we can say first of all angle 04 is going to be equal to no 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 let's just say plus angle 04 plus angle 01 they are supplementary okay the answer is y these are angles on a straight line okay angles on a straight line are supplementary it follows that oh oops not q man o4 is equal to 180 degrees minus a hundred which we found above therefore o4 is going to be 80 degrees okay that's one good step we can say but what 2 times angle E1 is going to be equal to angle O4 what is the story angle at center equals 2 times angle at circumference or at circle alright not a problem so it follows therefore that 2 angle E1 is going to be equal to 80 degrees you can say therefore E1 is going to be half of that which is 40 degrees so that one looks a bit quicker at least you don't have to say a lot of things like three calculations and all that now we try to simplify it of course the statement usually as well as its reason makes a bit of sense and then this one also becomes a bit, a bit more important and then of course the final answer well carry the last mark the rest is a means to an end all right so 9.2.2 says prove that ae ae is parallel to cb wow nice we've already proven we're going to use those co-interior angles so that we don't complicate our lives but you can see that there's plenty of options you can use angle at center twice angle at circumference over there from vertically opposite angles and then you can prove that these are alternate angles so you have options but let's choose the nicest and the newest 9.2.2 <laughs> we can say uh, a c b is 90 degrees right why is that you can say angle subtended by diameter they told us those were diameters right you can say also a s c a e is equal to 90 degrees what is the story same reason angle subtended by diameter ne. then we are like thank you very much we can see that but we can say now okay it says now therefore angle a c b plus angle a no c a e doesn't pass any so don't they are supplementary i mean this is evident they are each equal to 90. we can therefore say finally therefore a e is parallel to c b now what is the reason for us to say that it means core interior angles are supplementary you can even say converse but i mean this is a corollary it's not really a theorem supplementary okay but i could be wrong i don't know things a lot have changed these days but this was one of those corollaries okay maybe not necessarily a corollary but 
it is the stuff that it is you know so whatever you want to say you can say converse if you feel like it sounds like you're doing this in reverse because normally we go forward if we're given parallel lines we then say these are supplementary but now if you we prove supplementary before establishing parallelity then that should be a converse because it's like a flip of what usually is you know regarded as the forward forward way anyway so we get a mark for that a mark for that and then a mark for that then we go away with these 14 marks of course that includes the proof we jumped but we outlined exactly how you're going to handle it so do not cry please but go to your guides and stand textbooks and get it right okay Okay, but wait, you must not sound busy. So these questions are pretty easy. So when they are easy, we move. When they are tough, we stick around a bit. So this is question 10. So let's read the statements that 10 is saying. Question 10 says in the diagram, DRS. Oh, that's Formula 1 stuff. DRS zone. Ne. Is a tangent to the circle. T-M-A-R at point R. Okay, there it is. And that's the tangent of T-R-S. Okay, A-T bisects M-T-R. So, like they already made this one to be X, that means this one must also be X. But, there is a catch here. You will have to explain why it is equal to X. So, don't just take it for that. Alright, the other thing says AT intersects MR at P. Okay, that we can see and then uh, AR is drawn, which is fine. So, what can we do with this quickly? First of all, we can establish that this angle over here is equal to that angle over there. Alright, because that line bisects it. So, if it is X, this will be X. But we know that this angle should be equal to that angle over there. What is the story? These are the angles in the same segment, subtended by arc AM this time. There's no chord, but it's a chord or arc. It's accepted. And then, of course, we can see that it subtends those two. Bow tie style. The other thing is that this T1 is equal to this angle. Um, is equal to that angle. Uh, R4. That's the 10 chord theorem. Yes, that is what it is. And then, of course, we can still say, fine, we know for a fact that these angles also should be equal. Right. Why? Again, angles in the same segment, this time subtended by a very clear and visible chord RT or TR. All right. Um, at this point, I mean, you don't want to overly do things as well. Just leave, leave them a bit and then of course 10 chord theorem pushes to that extent. Maybe that is proper to, to show. Because I mean 10 chord also does that, 10 chord does that. So you sort it, this chord is doing things. Ne, yeah, it subtends two angles, this one and that one. Alright, I think at this stage we can just try to answer the questions and not overly indulge because sometimes it's really very simple now the question says prove giving reasons that r3 which is that one we already saw it is equal to r4 okay so that these two are equal and you can tell what is the link this one is equal to that this one which is equal to that and this one being equal to that so it's just that nice link there so you've already established it so you run with it Question 10, 10.1, so we have 10.1.1. Now we're going to start off by saying, you know, we're going to say angle T1 is equal to angle, uh, say, R4. Okay. What is the reason here? The reason is the 10 chord theorem. So you see, once you know 
what to do you can decide where you want to begin so 10 chord theorem all right sorted but what else is evident here the other thing that is evident is that uh, but we know that this very same t1 is equal to angle t2 what is the reason we can just say mt we can say at bisects mtr that is the story that is evident they gave it to us in fact we can just say given that at bisects mtr because we didn't just manufacture it it was given maybe we can say given that at bisects uh, mtr okay no problem so you're giving them their own thing the taste of their own medicine you can say also I know that well this angle T2 is equal to angle R3 now what is the story though these are angles in the same segment subtended by uh, arc AM okay that's not a chord it's an arc okay not a problem we can make our conclusion say therefore therefore uh, R 3 is equal to uh, T sorry R4 uh, R4 okay of course the link is these two angles t1 and t2 somehow uh, i don't know sometimes yeah you don't really want to say too much because you can say each is equal to t1 equal to t2 i mean but it's quite evident i mean you've made the link here they can follow it so it's not manufactured that should be all right so this is good that is good that is good and maybe that final one is good but now seeing that it's carrying a mark <laughs> maybe we may say each equals angle t1 which is also equal to angle t2 okay not a problem um we keep going 10.1.2 what are they saying here they're saying triangle apr and triangle mpt we must prove similarity so this is this triangle over here m white is apr okay yeah we are dealing with this triangle against uh, this triangle the man is the so we're comparing man and no matter okay I just go here go to my man. We have a little thing. I need a matter of no matter. When I go to my feet, so it's one you go to M is equal to A. So we should go to A. Equality and A in your resemblance. When I matter, I'm going to go to my body and can. Funny when I try P and then must be an ally. Hey, when those angles are equal. So if we prove two sets, the third is usually going to be equal again can but we can just do it directly and say well we know that these two are vertically opposite angles so they are equal so these triangles are equiangular yes therefore they are they are similar so yeah so we can say here in triangle APR uh, uh, and triangle MPT as K and the K as Bali's new one on deny tendency of one of shine anyway. So, if you didn't catch that, I just said the brain has a tendency to try and do its own things, which are crazy. Huh? So, yeah, let's have a look at this one. We can say fine. If we're looking in terms of triangle APR, which angle do we want? We're going to say angle A is equal to angle M in the other triangle. Why? These are angles in their same segment 
subtended by chord this time there's a chord RT or TR okay great stuff that's number one you can say next one we know that uh, there is going to be this guy here that R3 for that one is going to be equal to angle T2 on the other one we can say proved above because we saw it in question 10.1.1 that it was so then we can say the last one P1 is going to be equal to angle P2 these are vertically opposite angles okay vertically opposite angles are always equal when straight lines cross Therefore, triangle APR is similar to triangle MPD. Again, there has to be a reason. Angle, angle, angle. Or you can write the English word equiangular. Mm. Not a big deal. Okay, so we are sorted in, in, in such a way. Okay. Okay, let's keep going, guys. We are out of time. We don't want to waste time. So they're telling us if AR is equal to MT, where is AR? AR is part of that triangle. MT is that triangle. In fact, these are the these are the sides that are opposite the equal angles. So they should be proportional. So already you're getting a clue here. That fine. Uh, AR, you can just say AR equals 3 over 2 MT. What is that? You state it is given. Okay. Sometimes they forget they gave you these things. <laughs> you can say therefore AR over MT is going to be 3 over 2. You want the ratio, right? Because they are trying to get you to prove a ratio. So you want to put them into a ratio so you just simply divide by mt so that it comes out here so this is a conclusion from that statement you don't need to justify it further you can say therefore but hmm, uh, maybe let's start off by saying in triangle APR and triangle MPT so that at some point we know what we are trying to do because we proved similarity of these triangles so if we have that statement it means that we can say but mm, what we know that uh, let's start with this one PT which is part of which triangle the smaller one PT over PR ne? PT over PR again where is PT is opposite this angle which is equal to that and the side opposite that is PR is going to be equal to now always start, if they started with the other triangle you start there and you go over to the other one now we know that ratio so we're going to bring that ratio out here so we're going to start here and say fine we're going to say MT over AR because those are the sides that are opposite those equal angles in those triangles. Then you can say, well, these are the proportional sides in similar triangles. Of course, I've already stated which triangles you're talking about, so they know that you've proven them above as similar triangles. You can say, therefore, PT over PR is going to be see they they knew that is going to be a bit twisted at the end of the day but again you just flip that thing right it's going to be two over three that's done that's done so that was again another easy 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 parade i think that is important that is important in the answer so three marks okay so that is how you steal those 10 easy marks in the Okay, guys, not a problem. So, let's do the last question. And bury this paper. I think by now you, you should be feeling like, yeah, you've got the game going. If you don't already feel, nah, this is unnecessary. Uh, I know this stuff and all that, yeah. 
anyway if you know it good if you don't at least you have something to work with okay question 11 says in the diagram below triangle ABC has D and E on BC okay there they are then they're telling us BD is six centimeters okay I always like to indicate those distances directly so that is six centimeters so that I do not lose track of time but you can just write six on that line to avoid this colorfulness anyway then DC is nine centimeters so DC is nine centimeters okay great so that means D divides AC into 6 is to 9, which is 2 is to 3, right? Ah, yes, that is the ratio that it does. Because that means the whole of BC is basically uh, 14 centimeters. Sorry, 15 centimeters. All right, um, now let's look at this one. They're telling us that AT is to TC. AT is to this is 2 is to 1. Again here, you just always put a multiple, say x. Of course, you don't write 1x. If you wrote x, this is going to, I mean 2x, this is going to, because you know that in a ratio, this will cancel out and leave 2 is to 1. But these are not distances. These are ratios of those distances. So be careful of not making it look like it's a side, just like these ones. These ones are stated, these are measurements, these ones are ratios. So you see, ratio is basically a relationship, but a distance is an actual length. Okay, not a problem. Now let's see, they're saying write down the numerical value of CE over ED. Okay, oh, I forgot, they're telling us AD is parallel to TE, and there they are. Okay, guys, so you will have noticed that, fine, from this statement that I'm given, first of all, I mean, always explore. I'm trying to jump ship now, rushing into answering, which is not good because you don't want to only start looking when the questions have come because you may not see the hidden information. But if you recognize this before the answers, I mean, the questions are asked, You've already mapped out a few things in your mind. So if you're looking there, you have this side which is parallel to the other side. So it follows that you can use proportionality theorem here. So that ratio is going to be the same split here. So it's such that this can be B and then that 2B. Ne. So this E divides this one into 1 is to 2, but for the distance of 9 centimeters and it's good when you know the whole distance because you can use either of those ratios to find the other which is nice ne? yeah bo, yeah bo, yeah bo. okay so when they say write down it means write down so they don't want a reason remember they didn't say provide a reason they just said write down so this is going to be equal to I mean we know that CE over ED is going to be the same as CT over TA. That is going to be 1 over 2. They said write down the numerical value. They didn't say give us an answer. So you get your one mark and you go. But this comes from the proportionality theorem. Of course, I should have said if these lines are parallel, these angles are equal. These are corresponding angles. Yeah, they are corresponding angles. And if these are corresponding angles, you also know that, again, there's a z here. This z is equal to that angle there. So sometimes you may need these awkward looking angles where there's no mention, which means you may have to give a name for this if it becomes a means to an end. Mm. So that's pretty much what you can say anyway here. There was nothing more you could have done, so that's why I kind of jumped in 
and started doing things okay let's not relax too much guys we can actually finish this quickly show now they're saying show that D is the midpoint of BE show that D is the midpoint of BE so that means find what BE is if you can calculate BE and it comes up as six centimeters you have done the show ne. yeah bo. yeah bo. so we're going to use our ratios and proportion when they say show unfortunately there has to be something that is visible okay 11.2 so in fact we're doing question 11 but I'm starting with 2 because I answered 1 right in there so we know that that DE is divided into you know that ratio of A is to B so basically this is 2 of 3 parts of 9 centimeters so we can say here well well we know that fine DE because it's our means to an end DE is going to be equal to 2 over 3 remember when you do this you just take this portion and say what is this portion DE in this ratio is taking two parts but of how many parts of three parts that make up that line so it's going to be 2 over 3 okay multiplied by D uh, C okay that is the ratio that you have there which is going to be a when 2 over 3 multiplied by 9 then 3 goes once goes 3 times to 9 and then 2 times 3 is 6 centimeters alright so you've proven that well therefore we know that DE is equal to BD and therefore it means uh, D is the midpoint of BE I don't know why these guys can say such a thing show that something is and then they just give you one mark that's ridiculous honestly that is ridiculous because look you've had to perform a calculation and make some logical conclusions so for me it's not really one mark but yeah it's fine maybe they see that this is too easy okay and uh, let's look at this one uh, we have if FD is two centimeters okay so they're telling us that this is two centimeters over there and then calculate the length of TE so we want the length of TE okay great so what can we do with that one guys now mind you they just asked us to find DE indirectly so we already have that so remember we can use our ratios and proportion because remember this parallel side is still that side but this time we're going to focus on this triangle over here I'll make it green so they want us to use this green triangle so remember with proportionality theorem it works any which way you want okay you can use you can consider these as similar triangles or you can just consider this as proportionality theorem so it just works so look at this if you're going to relate this side to that side it means you're going to have to take this triangle and relate it to this big triangle okay this is the common side of course they are not going to ask you because once you have this side parallel to that already it captures that because this is how we prove the similarity uh, theorem so basically just going to say for this triangle is going to be BD say over DE because BD is opposite that angle that angle is equal to that in fact I should have shown that as well at some point I forget things that are critical alright so in any case if you look at that you will see that this angle is equal to that so for this big triangle the side is D is BD sorry BE and then for this angle for the small triangle is this one and then the other one is that one so we can just use one single triangle to do our magic but we need to be very careful if we're going to use these sides you can't use this over that okay because that now it means you're using only one triangle so please refer, if you're going to use these two as part of your proportion then you're not going to use BD over DE you're going to use BD over BE okay a whole side because this now simply says you're looking at this triangle here and this big whole one 
this big one that I made uh, whatever color it is all right so not a problem I can say here um, we can say here all right 11.3 we can simply say well we know that BD over uh, D let me just use what I want ne? yeah let me just use what I want and say BD over D F ne? yeah or FD is going to be equal to uh, BE over TE ne? again you can just say proportionality theorem prop theorem because that's what it means but you need to be careful when you're going to use these other sides you have to think about the entire side you could easily say this over the whole side and then it's going to be equal to that over that it's still okay but make sure this is over the whole side not this over just this portion that's just the catch so how you phrase it honestly it's not really a big deal so what do we know what is BD BD is 6 over FD they told us is 2 it's going to be equal to BE is basically 6 by 2 we know that we found out that that's the midpoint so that's going to be 12 over TE which is our friend so you cross multiply there it implies therefore that our TE is going to be 12 times 2 divided by 6 that is 24 divided by 6 that is 4 so it's going to be 4 um, centimeters okay guys that is very easy ne? not a big deal because it creates a bit of a situation if you're not careful with this kind of uh, similarity or whatever so your prop theorem here you need to be crafty about it so you get a mark for that statement and then you get a mark for the substitution how many marks are they giving just two okay so they don't care for your substitutions it's fine i think that should have been three marks holy okay guys uh, i think we're almost done now so we just have a few things to juggle and we end this pain. Okay, it was not painful at all. This was the easiest Euclidean geometry section. I mean, I think the free state and the KZN don't like Euclidean geometry, so they make it easy for their students, which is fine. There's nothing wrong. I mean, they seem to not like it anymore these days. The questions they ask are pretty simple. They used to bring stones when it comes to this segment of maths. Yo, now they're just making it too easy. Come on, man. Dropping the level of Euclidean geometry. That thing is hard. Keep it hard, okay? <laughs> Keep it hard. People need to know how to do hard things so that they can be strong. Don't want weak people here. We don't want them because if you look at what we have in the country going on, it's because of people who are weak, but who got it easy somehow. Yeah, Yeah, I feel like donoring them, but I can't do it. Can't do it. Yeah, doch. Sorry, guys, if any one of you gets offended by this, it's not my intention. I just am naturally outspoken. Area of triangle ADC. Triangle ADC. Eh? A, D, C. All right, all right, all right. Uh, over triangle of A, B, D, A, B, D. So what is the relationship between these two? Because you know what? Once they start doing the ratios and it's just two marks, it means there's not so much work for you to do. But you just got to be smart about things. Now if you look at these two triangles, this is a scaling triangle, ne? The scaling triangle nothing is equal angles are not equal sides are not equal but here's the catch they go to the same vertex with this other triangle so you can tell that oh doch, they share the common height of course when you analyze your diagram it becomes very easy you know to see certain things at some point 
So I always tell you, just do your bit. You will see how it simplifies your life. Because as you go, you don't have to get stuck by too many things. See, this one becomes very evident now because you've already analyzed your thing, made it easy for you. As your questions guide you, you realize new things. But you will see that if I say half base times height, this base, I already know that it's 9 centimeters. It was given and the height is the same. So if the height is the same, it will cancel out. So I'll just have the ratio of these sides, basically. Because when you have two triangles, they have the same height. So basically, their area is just the ratio of their bases. That's the theorem or corollary, whatever they call it. But I think we did these things in standard 7, which is grade 9. So these are stuff that you do in grade 9. If you have two triangles, have the same height, therefore their area, the ratio of their area is basically the ratio of their bases. You know? You know. So that is the story that you need to realize for these kinds of questions. So again, because it's stuff that is a bit distantish, but I mean that's grade 9, I tell you. Don't do these things in grade 10 unless things have changed. So this may look a bit far, but if you remember these things, you are happy. So you can say here, uh, draw height H on BD. Okay, this is very important because if you can talk about a height that nobody knows about, then it's absolute nonsense. I mean, we know what it means, but to show us you are organized, you have to show organization as well. Because you don't want to project the, the bad message. You can simply say, well, uh, you can say here, uh, it implies that now area of triangle Maybe we can say draw a perpendicular height. Maybe not say height, but perpendicular height. Uh, H on on B D. That's going to be said. Baladon nam yo hiking. This a pape gam nandi kanga gan te tango ba organized. The next thing, I am showing up a little less organized myself. Goodness. The preachers of things they don't practice. Ne? I'm one of those, unfortunately. It happened. Bob. So basically, we're going to use half base times height. It's going to be half, say, BD times H over half. Uh, I win. I mean, that's ADC. It can't be BD. It's going to be DC. Yabonak. 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 Moshinto. Yamentlegangagan. Okay, it's fine. And then this one is going to be BD. BD. Can't win go times H because you can see that H is the same. Already you, 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 you alerted them and indicate on the sketch. There's always a sketch in your answer sheet somewhere. But you can tell, oh, I have no half. Isn't this fun? Analysis isn't this fun. Which is going to be now DE over BD. Some people don't even bother to do that. They will just simply say area of this equal over area of that is going to be equal to this, and then they provide a reason. They have the same height, okay? Done. Because if they have the same height, the ratio of their area is essentially going to be the ratio of their bases from that corollary. So you can make it simple or can go out the mechanistic way. I'm just trying to show you the mechanistic way. But in the event you decided to bring this one out and put it here, you can just say they have the same height, H. That's if you didn't show all of this mechanistic work, okay? So let's see what is DE now. DE is 9 centimeters over. Uh, BD is 6 centimeters. So this is going to be 3 to 9, 3 times to 6, 2 times. And that is it. That is the one. And you can see that it was just 2 marks. Because what it boiled down to is the substitution and the answer. You know? Yeah. Stuff like that. But of course it could be a 3 mark question if you think about it. And let's say it just didn't become a mechanic. 
we just became a smart individual you just take this piece and cut and paste mm. okay 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 let's not complicate anyone's life here 11.4.2 the same story says area of triangle DEC ah DEC that one over the area of triangle ABC so what is common about these two triangles is this angle here so you can use area rule here otherwise anything else is going to hurt okay because this height if you draw this height here you don't know its size so you're going to have to calculate it which is unnecessary ne? don't do it and then you're going to have to want to calculate this height for ABC again which is going to be a lot but you only have three marks to campaign for so the thing is here focus on things that you can actually get done all right you already know those ratios there so if you know one side you can actually use one side to calculate the same value of the other so let's just see if we want we, we can avoid doing those calculations but all we know is that this side is in proportion with this whole side of AC whereas this whole little side as well has the same proportion as that side because it's part of that side so we can just use our area rule and use these sides they will just do the magic for us and therefore we know that it's just three marks there anyway so we can just simply say area of triangle tech 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 you see tech over area of abc well you know that this is going to be half um say ec times dc okay tender care times sine of angle c all over that's area rule isn't it so let's just go the mechanistic way before it just to see how things work out at times huh? mm. this is gonna be half say ac times bc sine a sine c sorry so it's the same angle that we're trying to use because what we want we want this guy to go that guy to go and then what do we have we have ec multiplied by dc over ac multiplied by bc nah. yeah you know this one now let's look at this one ec um wait where's ec ec well how do we deal with this situation now do we really I thought we were going to be so lucky that things just fall away before it too, but when's again to owning go man? No man, no man, no, no. I woke up with Sabala corner something now and then. No, we did not. Ish, 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 ish. Yeah, I born again go and sing my give a because bit funny is it does yeah, be man. I wanted things to go but to AC is good because I can deal with TC without putting values but my problem oh no there's no problem at all remember we found out that this guy is six and yet this is nine so this means this is three centimeters so we can't really bother ourselves here we'll just say EC is three mm -hmm. multiplied by TC TC was X from what we have over then we come down here and say AC, fast AC, AC is 3x because it's going to be all of those together. I don't want to ever calculate nothing, man. Nothing. And BC is basically 9 plus 6, which is 15. And then you know that X will eat the X. Ne. And U3, Atichau, another 3. Ne? Yeah. Is like that, you know. The three tells the other three, so we're left with one over fifteen. Of course, that's the ratio, so we leave it like this. so. So, do you see how you can manufacture your way through? But again, you see, there is always going to be a bit of a catch. 
but you see how you quickly troubleshoot that cat we almost were sweating but at the same time we quickly came back to our senses because we whack a diagram before we start answering otherwise everything starts to look a little bit uh, far out of reach and then when it does that you would be like yo 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 and yet as fun was thinking so if then we just do that All right so I think here our job is done all right our job is sorted so all right guys um, I hope everything made a bit of sense here um, and that uh, you know life becomes a little bit nicer a little bit uh, more interesting so all the time you do things you make them work all the time all the time so let's see where are the three marks maybe is this story and then boiling it down to the substitution boiling it down to the answer so there we have ourselves our nine marks all right guys uh, I hope that was very easy and um, you know nothing is more important than you know trying to work your magic a little bit just work your magic a little bit and your life becomes sorted like literally sorted um, yeah that's it uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and you're going to give it a thumbs up if you have a thumbs up <laughs> and uh, yeah and you're going to share it with your friends and uh, yeah we keep working otherwise don't 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 relax work harder get your hands dirty by getting involved in doing these things and if you didn't write this paper i'd advise get a copy from sterno physics and uh, stand more physics and uh, you uh, there is a memo already there i think uh, so you, you get that copy there and um, you work it out first and then you compare and contrast with what you see on the memo and also what you probably see on the video other than that good luck guys with everything the best of um, all that you want i wish you get it all without any interruptions whatsoever otherwise uh, yeah let's keep doing it let's keep doing it so i think i've done enough paper too now but i'll still um maybe do a few more trick functions maybe two or three but i'll just do questions only on trick functions i think the rest of trigonometry is pretty straightforward you know where to go and you know what to do but those trick uh, functions, the graphs, they can be a bit, I mean, they look simple, but they can be elusive. So we'll just try and break the barriers there, as well as a little bit of uh, paper one uh, functions as well. Just to try and break the barriers a bit as well, to give you a bit of an edge, but I think it should be covered. And then I'll try to do at least one physical science paper, and maybe one chemistry paper. And I just hope the power cuts don't interrupt too much so that you can have all of that, you know, during this week or, yeah, during this weekend or so. Uh, at least early next week uh, so that at least you can have a whole four weeks knowing there is a bit of something provided for you as Yeah. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, See you next time.